If you feel like your makeup always looks makeup-y or it looks off or you feel like your makeup is wearing you and you're not wearing it, this is going to be such a helpful video. This is my drugstore fair skin everyday makeup tutorial. I did do a video like this a while back which was more of a glam look with a mix of products and it had more warm tones. But today we're focusing on like my everyday makeup, keeping it super natural and sharing with you my favorite brands and products and tricks for picking out makeup and applying makeup from the drugstore if you have fair, pale skin, whatever you like to call it. So before we get into today's video, if you're not already subscribed, I would love to have you. It really helps me out. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you do enjoy it, find it helpful at any point, here's a picture of a cute dog for doing so. And let's just go ahead and get started in the video. So let's get started in the corrector category. I have two favorites from the drugstore. Firstly, the NYX HD Studio Concealer in the green shade. This is not a very high coverage concealer if you get one of the regular shades, but I do like their corrector shades. This green one specifically, I think is really nice for fair skin. Usually if you have fair skin, any sort of redness is just like extra on your skin. So I really like this for blemishes or just general redness. Also a very affordable concealer. So I just like to use a tiny amount. It can be very strong. And I really like this for just like my cheeks where I get red. And it's not going to completely cover it, it just helps to tone down the redness a little bit. And it's going to allow us to use less foundation. And then I just like to dab this in with a sponge. You can just tell right away, it just knocks down that redness a little bit. It feels very lightweight on the skin and I feel like NYX is a really good sensitive skin brand in my opinion as well. None of their, fra none of their products usually are fragrance or irritate my skin. They do also have a purple one, I believe a yellow one. Purple one would be nice if you have like a lot of yellowness or like sallowness in your skin. And yellow is going to be another good shade for redness. That might be a good one if you want it to be a little bit more subtle. Now that we've corrected our face a little bit onto the under eyes, this was such a game changer in my fair skin makeup routine. The Pixi Under Eye Corrector in Brightening Peach. I was looking for a corrector, randomly picked this up, and it turned out to be just such an amazing formula. It's a tiny little pot. It is a bit on the higher end of drugstore, but I just like to use my finger and dab this on my under eyes to correct the purpley darkness. You do have fair skin. Odds are your dark circles also show through a lot easier because we just don't have a lot of pigment in our skin. This is another just great way to end up using less makeup by just correcting the tones that we need to first. And it's just such a great corrector. If you feel like you have a lot of dark spots that are more on the purpley side, this could also be a good face corrector. I could probably do it on some of my little spots. Peach can do a lot of different things, but this is just such a gem. Next on to foundations. Foundations from the drugstore is really tricky for me, not only because of shades, but because I have sensitive skin and almost all drugstore foundations have some sort of fragrance in them. But I have two options to share with you. First is the one from NYX. I mentioned this in my first video. Not only do they have really great pale shades, this is literally called the shade pale it's nice and like neutral slightly more golden and i usually mix a little bit of this one as well because this one can be very light it's a very fair shade they do great shades if you're on the more neutral warm olive fair olive shade range because i do find most drugstore foundations in the fair shade ranges they lean very peachy Sometimes I will need to get like the second lightest shade for the tone but then it ends up being too dark and the lightest one is too peachy even though like the actual shade of it matches a little bit more. So it can be super confusing so I always look to NYX because they have great shades and this foundation is also a great foundation. It's the Can't Stop Won't Stop Full Coverage Foundation. I used this in my last fair skin video and I would only recommend it if you like full coverage matte finish and you don't have dry skin. I really like this for like special occasions, nights out, or even if I just want more of a glam look, this is a great one to go to. They also have, I believe a couple other foundation formulas I will have to try out because I do really love this one. It lasts forever. 
the performance is just amazing. I also wanted to give a mention to the True Skin Hydrating Foundation from Catrice. I believe this shade is a little bit dark for me, but this is more of a hydrating, a little bit lighter feeling foundation versus the NYX one. I think we'll actually be using this one today. It does have a pump. I have a full review on this if you are interested in watching that, but I'm going to start with one pump. Pump got clogged there a little bit. And oh, by the way, <laughs> this shade is Neutral Porcelain. They do have even lighter shades than this, which I probably should have gotten, but I still can make this one work. So with my foundation, I like to start with the areas I need the most coverage, which is actually this like bottom portion of my cheek. I know for most people, it's usually this like middle part of your face where there's some redness, but it's not necessarily the case for me. So I just start on the outer perimeter and I also like to work my way in. So the least amount of product is on the center of my face because that's just where you're prone to get cakey because that's also where my oil breaks through. You can tell this has lots of coverage, which is fantastic. Foundation is on. If you have any recommendations for your favorite drugstore foundation formulas, I would love to try them, especially a more like lighter coverage duty option because the options I have are more of that medium full coverage. And this one has like a nice skin finish, which I really love. But moving on to concealers, I have three different formula slash options here. Starting with the CoverGirl True Blend Undercover Concealer. This is a very good fuller coverage concealer. It creases slightly on me depending on what type of powder I'm using with it. So it's not my all time favorite, but it's a really good pick from the drugstore, especially if you just need coverage. You can honestly use this as a foundation as well. And this shade, I don't think we have the shade name here. I believe it's just the lightest shade. I will link the shade name below. It's a really great neutral fair shade and it's actually brightening for my under eyes. And then I wanted to mention the e.l.f. concealers. I have the original camo and I have the hydrating camo. This is just a really good concealer formula. Hydrating, I think if you have more normal to dry skin. I go between the two, sometimes I mix them. The camo is just more matte and a little bit less creasy on me personally. So the hydrating one, I have Fair Warm. They have a bunch of different undertones and shades. And then the 16 hour original camo, they have a pure white shade, which I really recommend having in your collection if you have fair skin. Reason for this is because you can mix it in with any concealer to make it lighter as long as you enjoy this formula. You could also mix this in with foundation. And it's just a really good tool to have on hand in case you need to lighten any of your products. You could even put this into blush. It's just a really versatile product. I'm not sure if they have the hydrating formula in the white shade. It might just be this original, but we're going to be going ahead and using both of these today. I'm gonna mix them. So when I am doing the white, I actually like to do it before the like skin tone one. And I usually just put it right on the inner corner and right on the outer corner. I wanna be very careful with this because it's pigmented and you can easily go overboard, but it's just such a nice brightening tool. You would honestly just use this as a concealer as long as you like really corrected beforehand because it doesn't look like white on my skin. It just really brightens everything up. I'm also taking a little bit of this on the center of my forehead, top of my chin there, a little bit down my nose. This is also going to brighten those areas. So now that I've corrected and brightened and have my foundation on, now is when I would go in with concealer for a little bit of coverage. I feel like I need to shake this. So I'm gonna use the hydrating camo concealer just a tiny bit and then blend this over the top of both the corrector and the brightener. This will just sort of marry everything together so it doesn't look patchy or displaced. Not that it looks patchy, but you know, if you have like a stark white on, I wanna make sure it blends together nicely. And I usually don't use eye primer. I just like to take my concealer on my sponge and just whack it over my eyelids to just cancel out the darkness because I do have like quite a lot of discoloration like from my brow to my lid basically. There's redness and then there's some darkness on my lids. It's just my favorite way. Now let's get into setting powders which is another real struggle having fair skin and looking for drugstore makeup is finding a powder that is truly translucent. Even in high-end makeup, it's a big thing for me. 
a lot of translucent powders have like a yellowish tint to it and they deepen my under eye which is not what i want i'm looking for brightness here so i have two options both are pressed but they're actually translucent powders first is the nyx hd powder and translucent the can't stop won't stop powder is also a nice truly translucent shade but i just finished that one up so i have this one and then we also have the covergirl clean fresh press powder in the shade translucent and these actually just show up translucently on the skin they're not yellow by any means i'm going to be using the nyx hd powder they do also sell this in different corrector shades i believe they still have them so they have a green one a purple one which would be nice again if you have a lot of redness or you want to do some color correcting but definitely be sure to be light-handed because you don't want to have too much of really any color on your face you just want enough to correct what you're looking to correct so before i like to set my concealer i like to take my finger and just make sure all those creases are blended out so we're not setting crease concealer, we wanna set smooth concealer. And then just taking the powder, this is just an Eco Tools brush I use all the time, and smoothing it on. I actually really don't like pressed powders for my under eyes, but these two are the exception. I also like to set my eyelid, and yeah, bam. As you can tell, it did not add any additional color which we love. And then for the rest of my face, I'll just be taking the CoverGirl Translucent Powder just to show you how both of them look. And they're both just really nice, super smoothing powders. I think this one has some flashback. I'll do a flash test at the end just to be sure because usually like these HD powders that have silica in them do. I'm not sure if this one does. We'll test at the end, but those are my top picks for non- deepening under eye powders and face powders moving on to bronzers another pain point at the drugstore i have three different options here first i have one from milani which i know milani has sold a bunch of different places these are the silky matte bronzing powders i like this because it is a very fair bronzer why this one isn't my absolute favorite is because it is still just a little bit too warm for what i prefer but it is very light in pigment, especially when you blend it out and go light-handed. It's one of those bronzers you can't really go wrong with. This does have a slight tropical-ish scent to it, so beware of that. And then probably my favorite bronzer from the drugstore slash one of my favorite bronzers ever. So I don't know whether to include Flower Beauty in drugstore or not. Like I technically think they are drugstore. I see them at my drugstores and Target and Walmart a lot of the time. So this is the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer in the shade Sunrise. Looking at this, you might not think it's a nice shade, but it is just one of the nicest tones. Because you can see compared to the Milani one, this one is warmer. Let me swatch that again for you, actually. This one is warmer and a bit more on that yellowy side, but the Flower Beauty one has this like brownish, I wouldn't call it red. It's a really nice neutral bronze, which I find a lot more flattering on my skin tone. So it kind of depends on what kind of undertone you like. The Flower Beauty one does have some shimmer in it, but it's not noticeable because it's that baked formula. It's super smoothing and it looks very beautiful and glowy and just, I love that bronzer. And I also wanted to give a mention to PYT. I do see this brand at Target. So this is the Faux Sun Bronzer Duo. So you get two shades here and usually I will mix them, but you do have a more matte option and then you have the shimmery option. So here is the PYT one. It's kind of a mixture of both of these. It is a bit warmer, but it's not quite as like yellow based as the Milani one, but not quite as neutral coolish as the flower beauty one so it kind of just again depends on what you like i think i'm gonna use the flower beauty one just because i love this bronzer so much an application tip for a bronzer is if you are getting a product onto your brush i always recommend just sort of working in slash blotting off the excess on your hand before you go onto your face this just ensures you don't apply too much product right away because when you do it's really hard to come back from that versus starting off light in getting to add more product on as you go. I do that with blush, bronzer, basically any sort of shade that I'm putting on my face. 
I feel like with so many of the fair skin drugstore bronzer recommendation videos I watched, they're all still very warm and orange. So if that's your issue as well, I really recommend the Flower Beauty one. I feel like it just looks the most natural on my skin tone. The glow is really natural looking and I just love the tone of it. It never looks too orange or fake. It just looks like my skin as if it naturally sort of got kissed by the sun. So blush is actually one of those categories where we do actually have some fun with at the drugstore because there's lots of different shades of blushes. I have two of my favorites here. Another product from Flower Beauty, the Flower Pots Blush in Sweet Pea. Really great dusty like cool rose if you have a cooler undertone like I do. It's also very light in pigment so it's not going to be one where it's like you got blush on. And then if you like cream options, the Pixi On The Glow Blush Tinted Moisture Stick. This is the one Fleur, which looks kind of pigmented in the stick, but it is this more juicy, blendable blush formula. I think this would look really beautiful on a variety of fair skin tones. It's not too warm of a pink, which is why I really enjoy it. And if you have warm, fair skin, there's lots of beautiful peaches at the drugstore to choose from. But I'm gonna go in with the Flower Beauty one. Another one I wanna mention, which is not really drugstore range, but it's similar, the Han Cosmetics Baby Pink Blush is this super light pastel blush. Let me just show you. Like I would have never picked out a shade like this, but it's one of my favorites because of just how pastel pink it is. It actually works really well for my skin tone. Like it almost looks like white on me, but it's this very beautiful flush that matches my natural flush very beautifully. But let's go in with the Flower Beauty one. I'm gonna do the same trick with making sure I don't have too much product on the brush. And then just stippling that on and bam that's about it for blushes highlights is a very another tough one i have two recommendations here first i wanted to recommend the physician's formula butter highlight i actually think their bronzer is a nice fair skin bronzer shade as well do a quick swatch it is more on that yellowy ish shade and this one has some shimmer in it blush is really nice as well so this highlight they have one that's even lighter than this this one's still slightly dark on me and this one is the shade tropical sands i'm not sure if this one was limited edition but they're very very shiny metallic highlights but they look nice and smoothing on the skin and i know they have one that's even lighter that's basically a white which is really great for fair skin so you don't get that darker cast on your cheekbones but my favorite is definitely this catrice supreme rose beam highlight i love a very light frosty pink and this just nails that category basically and it does not show up like darker on my skin it's just so glossy and pretty looking so i'm just going to take a little bit of the catrice highlight and blend that onto the cheekbones. I feel like there's so many formulas of highlight I do wanna try at the drugstore that they just don't make in a light enough shade for me. They're always like the champagne -y shade, which is never flattering on my skin. But that Catrice one and the Physician's Formula, definitely check those out if you are on the struggle bus for highlights at the drugstore. All right, moving on to brows. This is not really fair skin specific, but my favorite brow pencil from the drugstore is the NYX Micro Brow in the shade Taupe because it's a really nice, cooler taupe shade. Brow shades for me at the drugstore is another area I struggle with. The blonde shades are always too warm and sometimes the taupes are too cool, but this one from NYX, just really nice natural brow shade. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows with this. I do have another random brow tip. I also wanted to recommend this powder if you wanted a powder, loose powder with some tint in it. The Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder, they have the shade 05 Fair, which is a very nice like actual brightening shade. Maybe I'll put a little bit on just to show you. This is really nice if I just wanna like boost the coverage under my eyes. Yeah, so I'm just putting a tiny bit on. It's just really surprising to find like a tinted powder that actually works. So love that Maybelline in the lightest shade. I also like to take this if I want my brows to be a little bit lighter. And all I do is just set my brows with this slightly tinted powder and it just lightens them up a little bit if I feel like they're just verging on being too dark because I do like my brows on the lighter side. All right, next up is eyeshadow. I'm not a huge drugstore eyeshadow person. I don't buy a lot of new eyeshadow in general. When I like a palette, I usually stick with it. I have two here that are in the drugstore range. First, if you like warm neutrals, the Jason Wu palette. This is pretty light in pigment. It's not a super pigmented palette, which I think for fair skin, 
it's actually sometimes an advantage because it just shows up lighter it's easier to blend and you're not going to have those like mistake moments where you put too much on because it's just too pigmented and the shade is actually a bright enough brightener for the inner corner that is matte and then you get three shimmer shades which aren't my favorite but i do really like these matte neutrals and then a palette that i've been really loving lately is this color pop that's taupe i don't know if they still sell this i hope they do because it's so pretty but this is a more cool tone palette now i was like a dedicated warm eyeshadow girl forever and i think it's just because i didn't find cool neutrals that really worked for me yet but now like discovering this palette i kind of know what i like a little bit more and these are cooler neutrals but they're not too pink or purple which i found with most cool palettes like especially these shades on the top are just perfect for a cooler tone look you get like a pressed pigment shade the metallics are beautiful because you still get these browns but they're a little bit cooler than your traditional like neutral or neutral warm browns so this has been like my everyday palette for a little while now so i'm going to take this light taupe shade here which i also really appreciate for just being very light but still showing up on my skin so i use this sort of to contour my eye and then to add more depth i'm going in with this shade pebble beach which is definitely on more of like the neutral-ish warm side but it just really works with the rest of the shades in this palette and if you don't like that warm shade you can use the next one which is more purpley so the theme when i'm doing my makeup is to really create lower contrast looks and i will explain why i am like a lower medium contrast person meaning i have very fair skin and my hair is also relatively light so when you look at me overall you just see lightness and there's not a big contrast between the two if you have fair skin and you have darker hair you might actually feel that more contrast on your face is more flattering and cohesive with your whole look if that's the case, you could definitely play around with darker shades, black mascaras, more harsh brows, and bolder lips. But for me, those things just, I do like to have fun with those kinds of looks. But for the everyday, I work with very soft, non-contrasting tones and shades so that I stand out and not the makeup. Basically, all I'm going to do for the crease for now, because we're keeping it very day-to-day -day and light, I did want to mention a good matte white shadow, the NYX Professional in Whipped Cream. This is just something that I always wish was in palettes that I don't have. Whenever there's a highlight shade, it's usually more muted and it actually shows up darker on my skin so it doesn't end up being a highlight. But if you need just a pure matte white, this one I use just all the time to highlight my inner corners, which we will be doing now and also for the brow bone. And in terms of eyeliner, I like to do very soft, smoky liners or a brown wing liner if I want something a little bit more dramatic. But I'm gonna take this shade Rock Steady, which is such a pretty taupe from this palette, on a small shader brush. And I just start by smudging this on the outer half of my eye. Again, going with very soft, smoky shades. And then if I want it to be a little bit more sharp, I go in with this E6 brush from ColourPop, one of my favorite angled brushes, and I will mix the Rock Steady shade with this darker brown. And then still making sure to keep it smoky, but I make more of a winged shape. And you can even just go in with your finger to soften it. Softness really is like a game changer for fair skin makeup. If you feel like makeup always looks too makeup-y on you, just try this technique. Like, don't wear any harsh liners, use shadow instead, and just use softer colors and shades for your face. I feel like it makes such a big difference. I love this palette too because you could easily make it nighttime. For my lid, I'm gonna take a little bit of this slated shade, which is like the Super Shock formula, just a tiny bit, add a little bit of dimension on the center of the lid. You could obviously leave this matte as well. And that's about it for the eyeshadow. It's very subtle and natural, but that's exactly what we were going for in this video. For mascara, I was really resistant to this trick slash tip for a long time, but it's using brown mascara instead of black. I do use black if I want more drama. I still love black mascara, but on the day to day, I do really enjoy how brown mascara looks on me because again, it plays into that softness. It creates less 
harsh contrast on me where it's just like whoa like that's mascara it sort of melds with the rest of my makeup look so the maybelline sky high and brown has been my favorite for a long time it's a really nice brown it's not one of those like black brown <laughs> black browns it's not one of those black browns it's actually brown it's called true brown which it is and the tone is just super pretty so i like to use this has my day-to-day -day mascara. It's also kind of a random tip, but if you have moles, beauty marks on your face, like I do the ColourPop freckle pen, I actually like to use this. I think this is the lightest shade. And I like to just like recreate the moles that were there with this freckle pen. I think it's cool because it kind of gives the illusion that you're not wearing a ton of makeup even if you do have like a full coverage foundation on. So yeah, uh, mascara's on. Got a little messy, but we'll wait to clean that up. And this is pretty much everything besides the lips. Let's get into the lips. Starting with lip liner, which is another very, very tough one for me. But I do have some that I like. So the NYX pencils, the originals, are some of the best lip liners in my opinion, like ever. I just love them. They're more of like a waxy, long-lasting formula versus being super creamy, sort of like the ColourPop one is. So starting with the ColourPop, this one is the shade BFF which is still a little bit too warm for my preference, but if you like that, I think you would enjoy it. I have a ton more lip liner swatches in my previous video if you were interested in those, but the three shades from NYX that I usually use are Nude Beige, Beige, and then we also have Mauve. So Nude Beige is nice because it leans on this like cooler mauve side. I wish it was a little bit lighter and a little bit more purpley, but then we also have beige which is actually one that has shimmer in it and that one leans slightly more pink than the others and then we have mauve which is more of your deeper purple if you do wear more deep lip shades but these four i think are nice for not being too warm or pulling too peachy so i'm actually going to use the nyx beige i kind of like how this has a little bit of shimmer in it it's interesting these are always sold out when I go to the store, so I wanted to give you a couple different shade options. Yeah, this one actually still pulls a little bit too peachy on me, so I'm gonna go with Nude Beige. This one's just my favorite. Now for actual lip products, the first thing I wanted to recommend was a lip tint from Flower Beauty in the shade Play, which is a little bit deep, but the reason I recommend this is if you're like me and you have very little pigment to your lips, I find that using a lip tint under lipstick or on its own it helps keep color in your lips for a longer time. If you're going out to eat and you like, you're like, no, your lipstick is gonna rub off, use something like this because it leaves you with at least a little bit of color on your lips because sometimes I just look like I have no lips because I just don't have that pigment in my lips. So this one is really nice. The shade is more of this plum purple. When you put it on, it looks very natural. I will actually put this on just to show you under my lipstick is just a little bit and i think the like coolish pink is pretty flattering and then some of my favorite lipsticks also come from flower beauty they have a couple different formulas these are i have a matte and a cream here this is the matte and naked blush which is a slightly more warm pink really good dupe for charlotte tilbury's pillow talk and then this one is bear pout which i never use on its own but i use this in the center of my lips to lighten up uh, another lipstick shade again it is more on the warm side and then if you want a liquid lipstick that's like gonna stay forever the maybelline what are these even called the matte inks this one's in the shade loyalist this one's my favorite shade because it has more of this purple tinge to it i'll actually be wearing this one today i find shades like these just so much more flattering nude pinks that just have that slightly more purple undertone looks so much more natural on me versus these warmer nude pinks but i still wanted to mention them so i wish i had like a bullet form of this shade if you know something from the drugstore let me know because i do really love this shade i'm just gonna do a little bit of gloss this is the jason Wu extra pout which is this clearish pink gloss and i love the shade of the maybelline one it could just look a little bit drying at times all right so that was actually everything for my fair skin natural drugstore makeup look with tips and tricks I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you haven't seen my other fair skin video, I will link it in the info card above or in the description below. That one is more of a glam look with warmer tones. 
So yeah, this was super fun to do to show you my updated fair skin with drugstore products. Please don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. And I will of course see you all in my next video. Bye.